and we are very, very excited to welcome our, in our next guest, a Raiders legend, man in the Hall of Fame, Heisman Trophy, he's done it all. <laughs> Tim Brown, welcome welcome to our little setup here. How you doing? Hey, man. Yeah. Why is it that the Raiders are the only ones here? There, there are no other football teams. No other you teams know what? That's a, that's a great question. We were wondering yeah. the same thing, too, and it seems like such a missed opportunity for so many people. We got the backdrop. Yeah, yeah. We got the Raiders greats. I mean, it seems like an easy win for all the, the 31 I, other teams. I, I don't get it. I don't get it, and you guys have been here for years. I mean, so... I find that to be pretty inter interesting that no one is here. Much like the organization as a whole, we're looking <laughs> right, forward. Right. You know, we're at the no at doubt. the cutting edge of, of all <laughs> this kind of stuff. But no Tim, doubt. let me ask you a question. When you look back on this 2019 Raiders, you know the story, at least offensively, is the turnover at wide receiver. Mm -hmm. It seemed like each week it was two new mm -hmm. guys. Guys are fighting injury. We're bringing guys off the street, undrafted guys, guys who have mm -hmm. never seen plays in the league. And I'm curious. At any point in your career, did you have, did you witness, did you have to live through that turnover out wide as consistently as it happened for these Raiders? Well, you know, I, I think that um, there wasn't two guys, but you there were a couple years where almost every week I had a different guy starting opposite of me, you know, and um, so that made it tough. It made it tough for everybody, you know. I mean, yeah, I was there and, you know, catch him doing, doing my thing, but – if the other guy is a brand new guy, he's trying to figure it out, and you don't only get one week, and you're out, and you know they're rotating on other guys. So, um, but that was you know pretty early in '94, '95, sometime around there. Uh, but what happened with the Raiders this year is something that's pretty tough. You know, the AB thing blows up, and uh, things are going well, and all of a sudden, you know, Terrell gets hurt. You know, another situation comes up. Now you, this guy's gone. Now you're bringing in. And, you know, I, I was joking with John all, all, all year, telling him, man, if this is your year to win coach of the year. I mean, because for you guys to be winning football games and to be sitting at six and four at one point during the season is was remarkable, was really remarkable because he was literally piecing guys together and putting them on the football field. And, um, and, and that's tough to do in any offense. But trying to do it in that offense with so many movements and things of that nature um, is almost impossible. But yet they were able to, you know, purport themselves in a way that they were in every football game. And, and that's really all you can ask for. And playing meaningful football in yeah. Week 17, which not a lot of people outside that building thought would be the case. But I'm curious, you, you talked about Coach and really the, the job that he did this year. And all kidding aside, he really should be on the short list for, for no Coach doubt. of the Year no and doubt. what he did. And you mentioned the complexity of Coach's offense, of Gruden's offense, of all the – ins and the outs of it how challenging is that for him to have to have these new guys coming in week after week after week knowing the high level of intelligence and everything that goes in to getting that ball from a to z yeah you know i mean so basically you have to especially the z position because the z guy moves a lot and you know so if you got a new z it will change your whole offense because now you, you got to say okay do I want to move that guy or do I not want to move him? Do I want do I want him to do all the things that the Z is supposed to do? Um, and, you know, and I, I can tell from, from watching offense when they line up and blue 18, blue 18, well, you know, I know that that's, that's a problem because somebody should have been moving, somebody should have been doing something. So, um, you know, I, I think that this is just a very – it was a very difficult situation that John made look, you know, like it was just an okay situation. You know, where you have people say, oh, man, if they just catch that ball at the end of the game, they should, you know, they would have won. It's like, bro. Yeah, it's not that simple. Bro, so, yeah. first of all, we were lucky to be in the game, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think um, from that standpoint, it, it's definitely something to grow on, man. And uh, now you just got to get the mentality, man, the mentality of, of we can do this. I mean, look at what we did with what we did it with. And not, that's no slight to the guys who played, but at the same time, you know, there's a reason why you want, you know, the guys who are your starters in as many games as, po as possible. You know? you know, we were talking to Kurt Warner just a little bit ago, and he said something that I thought really kind of rung true for the, the 2019 Raiders in particular. He said, look, the, the 2019 Raiders were a good football team. He goes, they were, you know, pr maybe a better football team than the record indicated. He goes, but what they really lacked and you kind of saw it from week one to week 17, is they didn't have those explosive playmakers that'll give you those four or five plays per game. Yep. That just yep. changes the, the, yep. the entire narrative of a game. And he said, that's what's missing yep. in the silver and black right now. Is that yep. I, and I thought that was kind of an appropriate, uh, you know, it was well said in terms of where this team yeah, is well, right now. Yeah, that's what you had in AB, right? That, yeah. That, that's why, you, <laughs> that's why yeah. you signed him and brought him in because he was that guy. He was an explosive guy that you can throw five yards and he could turn it into a 40-yarder. You know, maybe it's a 60-yard touchdown. Who knows? 
but when he goes away, you, that, that guy is not on the street. You can't find mm-hmm. that guy on the street. And um, so, I mean, yeah, it would have been great if somebody would have stepped up and did this and did that. But, uh, again, in that offense, man, you're thinking so much, it's hard for you to concentrate on goal because you're trying to, am I in the right spot? Where do I need to, you know, uh, how do I need to influence? Because some plays you run in that offense are not meant for you to get the ball. It meant, it's meant for you to influence the defense in a way so somebody else can get the ball. So, um, so all that being said, man, you know, I think that, um, you know, I was very, very excited about, you know, how the year, you know, turned out. And I, I had picked them to go eight and eight or nine, uh, nine and seven. Pretty close. And, um, you know, you almost I mean, got there. No doubt about it. We should have should have gotten there. Uh, but I, I think this year, man, it's jump year. It's time to make the jump. You know, yeah. his first two years with us back in the day, we went eight and eight, eight and eight, and then we went from eight and eight to to making a play to making the uh, AFC Championship game, divisional playoff game, Super Bowl, and um, and this team definitely has the talent to do it. Um, you know, when they bring in that number one receiver, and I think that's going to be through the draft this year. Um, you know, I think we'll be we'll be right where we need to be. Do you? Is there any of the? I know we might be looking down the road a little bit, but are any of these wideouts coming out of college? Have any of them made you kind of raise your eyebrows? Is there any any in this group? Because we've heard for the past several months how deep this wide receiving class. Yeah. Are there any guys in particular that really stand out to you? Or? Well, CD CD Lamb is uh, one guy who I think is phenomenal from Oklahoma. Judy from. Um, Alabama. Uh, Alabama. There's another receiver at Alabama too, who's really, really good. Uh, I can't think of his name right now, but um, so you have you have guys. You know, I think the Raiders will have. You know, I think there's seven guys that are projecting to go in the first round this year, Re- receivers that is. So, um, uh, so there there should be a guy there. You know, what, 13, 12, 12, 12, and 19, 12 and 19 as it stands now. Yeah, and um, so I don't think they'll trade up. Because, well, look, I haven't looked at the draft in order to to see who would possibly take a wide receiver. But, um, but yeah, man, you know, I, 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 I know John can do a lot with a, with a little. But, man, what he can do with a lot would be amazing. Yeah, I think it's something. And, uh, it's that time. Yeah, it's something we'd like to see, too. But, you know, regardless, sitting at 7-9, and nine, a drastic improvement from the year before. It's trending in the right direction with this young nucleus of players. And you throw in the fact in a new market, in a new stadium in Las Vegas, a top-of-the-line facility in Henderson. I'm curious from your point of view because you're one of those unique guys, and there's not that many of you, where you played in Los Angeles, you played in Oakland. Now you're going to see this next chapter of this organization in Las Vegas. And if you could just go back in the way back machine for just a second, do you remember what the biggest challenges for you were as a player, you know, when you were kind of in that in-between, in-between market, that first year uh, when you moved cities? Uh, When we moved from L.A. to Oakland? Yeah. Um, You know, the biggest thing for me was obviously trying to find a place to live. You know, I mean, that was a huge deal. But after that, what we realized, you know, in in L.A., we were the little fish in the big pond. And when we got to Oakland, we were the big fish in the, in the, in, in the, in the little pond, you know. So um, that made it pretty, pretty difficult because we had a lot of focus on us. But uh, because of the relationship with the, with the city and the, and the organization, there weren't many opportunities to do things. And it almost made it worse in a way. In L.A., you can hide. Here, you can't hide. And um, so you walk in the room or you walk in a restaurant and people roll their eyes because you're a Raider and you think, oh, you're not getting a good table you know, just because, you know, it was yeah. really that bad for us when we first got there, you know. Uh, I had a guy who had flown me up before the season and telling me he wanted me, you know, to work with his car dealership. And uh, this guy came in the office and walked around for two or three minutes and sat down and said, I can't do it. You know, you work for Al Davis and, you know, I hate that guy, you know, and, and, you know, didn't give me the deal because of that. And I had nothing to do with whatever happened years ago. So there were a lot of things we had to overcome that we didn't realize that we would have to overcome when we got there. And it really made it different. I think what broke the ice for me was I started doing a lot of charity work in the, in the neighborhood. And people started to look at me as, you know, a guy who is not just trying to take advantage of Oakland, but actually trying to help Oakland. Committed to the community, yes. committed to the neighborhoods, yeah. and, and bringing everything up. Yeah. And, and obviously, one of the things that we're really excited about Las Vegas, you know, next year, certainly, but going forward, is it's a fresh start in so many ways. But I'm curious, what I- which of your teammates do you think would have been great Las Vegas Raiders? Are there any guys that you think would have just loved those oh, bright yeah, lights? There's, that there's too many guys. Have been, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess you haven't looked at the rosters we had back in the day. <laughs> I mean, we had some crazy, crazy guys, man. But, 
No, you know, I, I think even I would have enjoyed, you know, being in a place like L.A. because there's so many, like uh, Vegas, because there's so many opportunities to do some incredible things, you know, whether it's working with companies or uh, in the communities or whatever. So, um, yeah, it would have been a dream come true for me. And, and certainly I could think of 50 other guys who would have been in the same predicament. Absolutely. Well, well said, Tim, and we thank you for your time. It's always good thank to catch you. up with Appreciate you. you guys, Talk man. a little Absolutely. silver and black. Raiders. And there it is. I, I have to do it, man. I'm I couldn't sorry. say it better myself. <laughs> Tim Brown, everybody. Hey, Raider Nation, if you like that video, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of our exclusive content, behind-the-scenes footage, and more. Go Raiders.